Hi. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can leverage asymmetric cryptography and make it so that only you can decide who's allowed to mint your NFTs and how. Our implementation is going to rely on the ECDCA open source library from Open Zeppelin. It stands short for Elliptic Curve Digital Signature Algorithm. But you don't really have to understand it for it to be very helpful. The Open Zeppelin's implementation is well tested and it's safe for us to use. So we're going to create a key pair, a private key that will live securely on our backend server, and we're going to use it to generate token signatures. And then the second part of the key pair, its public key, will store in our smart contract so it can verify the validity of the signatures that it receives. So we check if the signature token was generated by our private key. And if so, we let the wallet mint a token. Otherwise, we revert the transaction with an error. The signature is basically a hashed array of our salt string, contract address, and the whitelisted wallet. So unless the exact same salt string is presented from the exact same wallet address, the mint won't go through. So let's dive in into our implementation here. We have an NFT token contract, which is not really an ERC721 contract. All it does, uh, if the mint is successful, is emit a minted event with the address of the wallet that minted it and a token ID, which uh, for the purpose of this video to make things simpler, I'm just going to stop as one. In a real NFT contract, you'd probably have a token ID variable to track that. Now, before it mints or emits our mint event, it's going to use a verify token for address method that this contract gets from inheriting a signed token verifier contract. I'm going to post the link to the source code in the show notes, but all we're interested in in here is this method, which basically takes our salt string, our signature token, and the address of the minter, and then either says true or false based on whether this parameters were valid or not. So this is on our smart contract side, how the verification is going to happen. But what about the generation of the signature? Now, to do that, we first need to create that key pair, which in this case we're gonna we're gonna create. We're gonna use my Ether wallet and generate an encrypted JSON um, wallet that we'll later use in a Node.js backend. So, let's go and click on create a new wallet. We wanna generate a software wallet with a key store file. We'll give it a password. We'll call it secret password. Create a wallet. And then we'll just download it. So let's start building our backend to generate the signatures. I'm going to use Node.js for this example. So let's uh, yarn in it, our package JSON. We're going to use the ethers.js library as well as the .env library. We're going to have a sign.js file and we're going to also create a folder to store our JSON wallet. So we'll say signer encrypted.json. And there we go. So our sign.js is going to First, we need to initialize our env variables from our .env file. That's where we're going to pass our um, password to decrypt our wallet, uh, to decrypt our private key. 
So we'll use .env config. And then let's actually go ahead and create our .env file. And we'll just say signer password. And we're also gonna need another variable to use when generating our signatures. It's gonna be our contract address. I'm gonna stop this with uh, a random address for now. And then after we deploy our contract in Remix, we'll replace this with the actual contract address. Okay, moving on with our uh, backend implementation, we're gonna need uh, to decrypt our wallet. So let's do, let's grab the encrypted wallet JSON file first. Um, we're gonna need the file system library from Node to do that. Read file sync. We'll pass the lib and the encoding is gonna be UTF-8. All right, and then we'll have a catch in case there are any errors, we just want to output them in the console. Okay, now we also need the ethers.js library to be able to decrypt our wallet and to derive uh, its public key as well as to use the private key to generate our signatures. So let's require ethers first. And let's also require another dependency from node called crypto. This is going to assist us in generating our signatures. So now let's define our wallet, which is going to be a new ethers wallet from encrypted JSON sync. And we'll pass in our encrypted wallet JSON and the password to decrypt it from our env variables, signer password. All right, so if this works, we want to console log sign our wallet decrypted and then the wallet address okay let's see if this does anything and as you can see we got our public uh, key hash of our key pair so this is going to be our signer uh, which we'll later pass in into our constructor here but let's continue with the signatures. So once we got the wallet address, once we decrypted it from uh, in our backend, we want to use it to generate that token signature. So we need to have this sign script take another argument, which is going to be the wallet address that we want to whitelist and include in that signature. To do that, let's just say whitelisted address and then grab the second um, index, which is going to be the first argument that you pass to your um, note script. The first is going to be this, the second one. So zero is note, one is your sign.js path, and then two is actually whatever you pass here. So that would be our whitelisted address. And let's also generate a random salt string. And we'll use the crypto dependency from node to do that. Random byte 16, and then turn it into a string. And let's prepare our encoded uh, payload that we're then going to sign. And like I mentioned before, it's a combination of our salt string, our contract address, and the whitelisted address. So the payload would be ethers utils. We're going to use the API coder to 
encode it. So it's a string for our salt, our contract address, and the whitelisted address. And then we need to hash it using another utility method from ethers. And now we can use our wallet to sign that payload hash. Now, if successful, we'll just want to output that in our console. We'll use a convenience method here to make it look pretty. Allowed address. We'll have our salt. And the token would be the result. We can actually call this token. OK. Let's see if this works. So if I want to sign this, which is not a real wallet address, it's going to give me an invalid argument. Um, I could use one of the account addresses that Remix provides. So let's do sign.js. And apparently it's, I made a typo in 256, not 265. Now, if we do it again, you can see that we got the salt and the signature token for this specific uh, address that we just whitelisted. And so let's see if we can use this to mint an NFT token from our smart contract. First, we need to deploy our contract. So let's well, first we need to compile it and then we can deploy. I want to do this one. And so the signer would be our decrypted wallet address or its public address. We deploy it. So I'm just going to call whitelist mint without any arguments and invalid value. Okay. So let's try and pass. So we're minting from this wallet now which uh, is the same that created the contract, but let's see if it's gonna let us. So we pass in a random salt string, and then let's use the token that we generated, although we did generate it for this address. So if our implementation works, it's it shouldn't let us mint because this token string is generated for another wallet. So we call it again and it says transaction has been reverted, invalid token as we as we would expect. Now let's switch our sender wallet to the one that we just used to generate our signature. Let's also use the exact same salt string. And let's try to mint now. And as you can see, we got no errors. And we have our minted event emitted just like we want it to. Now, this is a very basic implementation. And uh, the backend that this node backend 
You can integrate it with your Web3 minting interface. You can configure a firewall so that only your minting page can access this. And you can use it to basically whitelist selected addresses. For example, you could have a Discord bot that does this for you automatically that generates the salts and the token signatures. And then whoever has been whitelisted from your Discord channel can go ahead and mint, but no one else but them can, can actually mint your NFTs. Um, that's it for today. Hope this was helpful. Uh, hope this is going to help you conduct a smooth launch of your next NFT collection. Leave your questions in the comments below and make sure to subscribe if you want to learn more about NFTs, smart contracts, and Web3. And I'll see you in the next one.